And with me for the whole of the programme today, I've been joined by the Conservative MP Dominic Grieve, Labour's Geaslia Stewart and Douglas Carswell for UKIP. Welcome to all of you. Thank you. Let's kick off with the fallout from Ed Miliband's decision to sack Emily Thornbury from the Labour front bench for tweeting a picture of a white van parked outside a house in Strood draped in England flags. Over the weekend, Mr Miliband came under fire from some Labour MPs for overreacting. And that prompted others to attack Mr Miliband's attackers for not understanding how damaging the incident is. Gisela Stewart, when you saw that tweet, the white van outside a house, draped in St George's flags, what did it say to you? It said to me, like some houses in Bartley Green, uh, I've seen it before. Uh, but you know, I was the woman who stood between Tony Blair and Sharon Storer in the 2001 election. There are moments in politics where uh, a whole kind of mood and you and a particular act coincide in a way which, in case of just Emily's case, you'd say, this is really incredibly unfair. But I thought, what, why, what would I have done if I'd been in Miliband that evening? Mm. I probably would have done the same. Why? Because you, you, you just suddenly get this configuration of the irrational emotions. Everybody will have put into that picture what they wanted to put in there. Because, you know, she, she said very little to it. Well, all so she said, she tweeted that photo, as we've described it, and captioned it, image of Rochester. And yep. I'll say again, what did it say to you, that picture? It said to me, this is like part of my constituency. Right. But, but did it say anything else? Did it have deep but, uh, political also, meaning? Did it give some sort of motivation behind what Labour politicians well, think? In, given my constituency, in the, the one half of the constituency, you would have seen it. In the leafier part of Edgbaston, which is also part of my constituency, you wouldn't have seen it. So I can see why, depending on where you are, yeah. it really hit you differently. Right. But for Ed Miliband, you say it was a conflation of all sorts of different events. But why, unless you are gripped by panic and fear, would you react by sacking Emily Thornbury from her job as Shadow Attorney General? Because there were a significant number of people who thought that she was actually ridiculing a part of the electorate which feels left behind, particularly left behind by a party which they think like Labour should represent them. That's why I'm saying on its own you could think this was unfair. I think as a package it probably just was one of those things in politics where that's the price you paid. It's, it, it, it's, what, what went through your mind, I, Douglas Carswell, when you I saw it? I thought this is extraordinary. The party that produced Keir Hardy is now the party of Emily Thornbury. We have big corporate parties that are so out of touch they produce people who become MPs and front benchers without ever knowing what swing voters in marginal seats look like. And when they're sent down to Rochester and Strood to try to win support, they, they come, like Matthew Paris did in Clacton, up against real people and they're shocked. And this is how out of touch our big corporate parties Is that parties what the tweet become. said? To me, it did, absolutely. It was this sense of... But that's because you're an, uh, an opposing politician. Well, it's because I looked at that tweet and I thought someone is showing absolute contempt for ordinary folk in Stroud. It's, it's an extraordinary out-of-touch political system that but allows did... Emily Thornbury to even become an MP, let alone a front-bencher, and to think like that. Look, there are real people in Islington as there are real people Ooh. in Rochester. Uh, you could argue that, you know, Tweeting is something we probably should leave to other people and not the politicians. No, this is about judgment, but, isn't it? I tweet, all, about, the, I no, tweet no, all the no. time without showing no, contempt no, no, but, for but the views on. of voters. There, there are as real here as there everywhere else, you know? What did it say to you? There was nothing unusual about this house. I have lots of such houses in my constituency. It's somebody celebrating something about their identity. I've no idea what Emily meant by doing it and I actually feel sorry for her because we don't actually know what she meant. But I know what happened within Labour is when they saw this image, it brought home to them that it would be viewed as being contemptuous and out of touch. And, out of touch. and that's why Ed Miliband re reacted in the way in which he did. And I think that there is a lesson in that because, in fact, the Labour Party is out of touch with this group of people and, indeed, you could argue many other political parties have been historically <laughs> out of touch with this group of well, people the, 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 whilst being very happy to go to other groups and to be seen to identify with them well, and to ignore well, the, these people. Did, and, in my view, they are, have just as much a right of participation well, and, indeed, well, uh, the and indeed in my judgment, Paris, they play, so many of them play an important Emily role Hallway. in our society uh, and... I think that that's why it touched a raw nerve for Ed Miliband. But you'd have to ask Emily what she meant by it, whether she was surprised by this, uh, this vision, because I wasn't. It's, and indeed, when I was campaigning in Rochester, there were other indications right, well, of pride in English identity did, that were, were present in a number of places in a completely pleasant fashion. Did Ed Miliband's action actually calm the situation or did it inflame it? 
Oh, at this stage, you can't say this calmed it, but it was a recognition. But can I just come back to... Hang on, you said you agreed with him. You would have done the no, same no, thing. At, at that moment, I, I, I went... Because hindsight's a wonderful thing. I went back and I thought, at that moment, if I'd been in his position, what would I have done? And I Maybe would have reacted the same way. At the, no. at the height of the banking crisis, we discovered banks are not very good at banking. Maybe what we're discovering is that the professional political elite in Westminster are just pretty you, useless Of which you were part, Douglas Well, Of course, I, I, you I were resigned. a Conservative politician. I, you resigned I, I, and I now got a, I, I got a direct mandate from the people. I think that's the first time no, it's happened in my lifetime. But, but, but you but, have been but, part but, of that elite establishment. You must understand that alienation. It, and I walked away from it because it wouldn't change. Perhaps, like the banks, we come to the realisation that the people we pay a large sum of money to do politics for us are not very good at politics. I think that's what this shows. The Tory party produced Matthew Paris and his sneer in Clacton. Emily Thornberry has produced this embarrassment in Rochester. It's part of the same uh, problem. You, uh, come on, come on. What, 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 what are MPs for? MPs are for representing the people in the patch they have been uh, elected in, in order to majority them, form the government and govern. I think there is a, a, a kind of undermining, and this is where the Europe debate comes into it later, of who makes decisions, uh, have we got any control over it, which that feeds into. But just on that picture of the flag of St George, it has made the most extraordinary journey and in this moment, it just was a perfect storm. Do you feel respect when you look at a picture like that and see a house draped in the flag? I just feel completely comfortable. I don't think it's a question of respect. It is part of the diversity of our society. There are lots of different people in this country who seek the common good and who have different ways of identifying their Britishness and their Englishness. The presence of flags outside a house in that way tells me very little about the person who's living within it. It tells me that they are identifying in a particular way, which, as a politician, I ought to be trying to harness for the common good and have a dialogue with the person, just in the same way as if it's a Sikh living in my constituency who's proclaiming his Sikhism, I want to get him involved in the local community. Can I just ask briefly, have you spoken to Emily Thornberry? No, I haven't. Will you be? Uh, yeah. Um... What, to offer your sympathy or...? Yeah, but just saying, you having know, lost her job. You, you, you know, you, you were just in the wrong place at the well, wrong I, time, and it hit you. And there's a real. She was but in that's, politics. That, she that's, was that's in the wrong but, place. But yeah. that's politics, you know. Yeah. Yep. But. Yes. We'll leave it there. Now, it's time for our daily quiz. And the question for today is what household essential, according to the business minister Matt Hancock, could rise in price thanks to an EU directive? Does Mr Hancock say we'll have to pay more for A?